I'd like to welcome you all to the Sustainability Advisory Board meeting for Monday, October 1st. I see we do have quorum and I want to thank you all for coming out on this lovely, lovely evening. Um, is there anyone who has anything to say for public comment? Alicia, yeah, come, come up to a microphone. Hi, I'm Alicia Allsberg, and I reached out a few weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, to the director of the farmer's market, and I had a few ideas that I wanted to bounce off of them as far as what you see when you're walking through the farmer's market. And a few of the things was about encouraging the customers to bring their own containers and bags even for the cooked food, we use Coop containers for our uh, egg rolls, and to promote um, for them to sponsor a vendor or two that will sell reusable produce mesh bags, perhaps, Excuse me. and what? to for for the farmers market to actually sponsor a vendor to help yeah. promote using um, selling like mesh produce bags or reusable bags. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And then um, just point blank banning the use of styrofoam and then um, banning the use of plastic bags, especially in this, this whole idea came after the announcement of um, Kroger with uh, the plastic bags. So requesting them that then their vendors use just paper bags. I don't know why everything's all plastic. And then um, encouraging vendors selling recyclable items like you know, if they get the cold coffee in plastic cups or they have the water bottles, there's vendors that sell soda cans, that those vendors should have some type of recycling or reciprocal at their tent. Um, I don't think personally that it's up to anybody else to, to figure that out, that, you know, it's the vendor's responsibility if they're selling something recyclable. And then it would take the pressure off the farmer's market because they know of their struggles and what was really nice is I did get a very fast response um, and it was a very welcoming response that they appreciated all the ideas and that they are working on um, the agenda to be uh, this next agenda to be more environmentally friendly market so it is something that they're working on however when it comes to the recycling program they did ask um, if there was any kind of organization that I belong to that could manage this and fund it. Now I let her know that I'm just an individual person and I don't have this, but that I would bring it to the public comment here. So with that being said, that's all I have for the public comment. Well, thank you. And we thank you for reaching out to the farmer's market and we'll have to put that on some future agenda. Yeah. So. <laughs> And now that it's going to be moving to, well, it's not too long. It's four or five more sessions before it moves to four more until it moves to Menominee Nation um, Arena anyway for the winter. So, which will change the dynamics a little bit. But maybe they can. Enforce, Thank you, Alicia. Maybe they can enforce the recycling over there. Mm -hmm. Maybe they can. We can ask. Oh, okay. Um, our last meeting that we actually had minutes for was on August 6th because of Labor Day. We didn't have a regular meeting in September. Did you all have a chance to review the minutes? I would entertain a motion for to approve them. So move. Second. Any discussion? Okay. Um, <clears throat> If you agree that we should approve the minutes as written, please say aye. All right. Aye. Thank you. And Lynn, thank you for thank you for being here and thank you for waiting while I was stuck on the other <laughs> side of the tracks. <clears throat> um, Lynn Lawrenson, our city attorney, is going to give us um, some information about Robert's rules and this handy dandy little book I see. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, We've been doing the last couple of years through our office for the different boards and commissions, um, kind of a little binder to help you put everything you kind of need all in one spot. So I'm just going to run through that. If there are questions as I go along, feel free to interrupt me. But otherwise, I'll just kind of roll through and give you an introduction to this. We do write things out so that um, you can refer back to it if you have questions. 
and um, you can always call us as well in the city attorney's office so I'm the city attorney I do have two other attorneys who work in the office with me one is Dave Praska he's worked for the city for just over 10 years and then just this past year we added Amy Vandenhogen and so typically if you call we're able to get back to you within within a day or two because at least one of us is is around and in the office so and your, your number is two three six five one one five thank you so um, and I'm just gonna as I said run through here the first thing is open meetings and public records the uh, first page just is the excerpt from the statutes we give you that just because um, Wisconsin takes a very broad view of open government and um, declares it to be in the public policy of the state this is that that language o open meetings requires a couple of things it's if you have a meeting as a body then there are certain requirements you have to meet so if a meeting would be defined as convening of the members of your body for the purpose of conducting business or gathering information about things that are going to come before your body so if you would all happen to go to the Grand Opera House next weekend to watch a show and you just happen to run into each other you're fine because that's just a social meeting you don't meet the the purpose test so if generally you're gonna look for two things numbers and purpose if you have two of you meet somewhere how many do you have nine on your board Nine. Mm -hmm. so um, five is is a quorum three can control anything that would occur actually on the board so if you had only five of you show up at a meeting three people would be able to pass or block any measure so anytime you have three or more of you together is when you want to be concerned typically with the council we always say two because you're a little bit smaller of a body and four is your your quorum so two can block anything um, if you have three of you who you know get together and you talk about something that's going to come before the board and then you each go out and talk to somebody else on the board you're now you've got more than that three you've got a problem under the the open meetings law so you really want to be careful when you're talking about things that are that are within the purview of this board or that are going to come before you or you might want to bring before you in the future the the public has the right to be informed of that they have the right to to watch to um, give you input on that so you want to be careful if you're if you're talking about it that you're keeping that within within the the two maybe two other members or put it on an agenda because you've got your meeting every month you can talk about it at the meeting all you want because then it's properly noticed um, again social things are different social is social you can get together talk about the kids talk about what you did over the summer all of that all you want mm -hmm. and it's not a violation just some real quick things that um, we go through with special considerations generally written correspondence is not going to create a problem the um, the one thing that the the AG's office cautions you on and actually our office will as well is about emails emails tend to get very conversational we all hit reply all I'm I'm very guilty of this when I write emails back I can get I can make it sound just like we're talking in person because I will just write very casually and and reply all to everybody and pretty soon you have basically an electronic conversation going and there's been no cases on that yet but you and you are creating public records but we just caution it because if you're gonna have a general discussion and you're gonna have a lot of back and forth again the place to do that is at your regular meeting so that everybody can listen they can watch on TV they can participate give citizen statements if they want so it's just a, something to be a little cautious of um, the walking quorum we addressed a little bit if I just I want to talk about something and I'll 
call you and say, I really think we should talk about this at our next meeting. Then you call the next person, then you call the next person. We haven't all got together in one place, but we certainly have conveyed the message through enough of us that it's, it's a problem from the meetings aspect. So once again, if I talk to you and you say, yeah, that's a really good idea, let's put that on the agenda and then we can talk about it as a group. <coughs> Um, multiple meetings for multiple bodies. I think you guys have done some joint workshops, mm -hmm. haven't you? So that's all that refers to is when you do a joint workshop with another body, we want to make sure that we I, identify that both bodies are there in our meetings. So if you let Stephen know <laughs> that you are planning to attend another meeting of another body, say there's something on plan commission, that um, you wanted to sit in and, and observe and might have some input on, you can let Stephen know and he would say, okay, I have at least three that I know are going. I'm going to go ahead and notice that so that I don't have to chase one of you out of the room when too many <laughs> of you show up. So um, again, that's pretty quick on meetings, but if the meetings law applies, what does that mean? You have to give notice. And the notice has to reasonably apprise the public and the media of the topics to be discussed and items to be acted on. Basically, you have to tell people what you're going to talk about at your meeting. And it has to be understandable. If, um, if I look at your agenda and I can't figure out what you're going to talk about, that's a problem. So when you're putting things on the agenda, just try and use as simple of language as possible. Stephen will help, I'm sure, if if he gets somebody who says, put this on the agenda, and he doesn't know what it is, you guys are really in trouble because <laughs> he should pretty much know what any of it is. So um, it, be clear, be as use as simple of language as you can usually so that anybody who's reading it knows what's going to be talked about. Your timing at least 24 hours in advance is the minimum. We generally prefer to um, have the meeting notices go out with a little more time than that because that's awfully short notice for anybody who actually does want to show up and give you some input. Closed sessions are almost never going to apply to this body. Um, I can't think of an instance when, <laughs> when it actually would. but. The closed sessions, um, we use them with council once in a while. If we're going to buy property and there's a bargaining reason or um, if you have a closed session for the city manager's review, they may do a closed session for that. But for this type of body, there's going to be very, very little things that you actually don't want the public to know <laughs> about and to come and talk to you about. So We just um, wish they'd listen. Yeah. <laughs> Accessibility, um, they have to be reasonably accessible. So that gets us to November when you guys are all getting moved, when the elevator's out of commission for here in City Hall. Typically, all our meetings here at City Hall are ADA accessible because they are um, taking the elevator out of commission sometime in November. There, you will get a notice. Your meeting is going to move actually over, I assume, to the police department safety building. Is that correct? That's what I've heard about. Yeah. I know plan commission, I'm not sure for us, I'd imagine it might be similar. So that they can still be televised actually over there. We have the ability to still televise them, I think still live and, um, and that anybody can get to them without the elevator. This building is not so friendly for <laughs> someone who has difficulty moving around. Um, tape recording and videotaping and citizen participation. People can come to your meetings. That's what the open meetings law says. That's why they give it the name. Citizens have the right to attend. They don't necessarily have the right to speak. Um, you have a citizen input time on your agenda. That is, that's a good practice. It's up to you guys. You can put some reasonable rules on that if you'd like. Um, if you ever get into the situation where you have so many people coming and it's running your your meetings so long and and that becomes a problem for you you might want to consider those types of rules but and we can help you with that you can put limits on we're going to have 15 minutes and as many people as can talk in 15 minutes or 
Uh, the council gives each person a five minute rule. Five minutes is a really long time to talk. <laughs> I can do it, but <laughs> not everyone is, is up to that. So uh, a lot of our other boards use three minutes. So there are different things you can do. If you ever want to start looking at those kind of rules, we can come back and we can talk about that specifically. Or Stephen can let us know what you're looking at and we can help him out. Mm -hmm. um, tape recording and videotaping. You guys are televised anyway, so you have, you're used to having video cameras on. The public can also show up, they can tape record, they can videotape. They can't do it in such a manner that it disrupts your meeting. So if we have somebody who's running around sticking a <laughs> microphone in everybody, so I would call that pretty disruptive. <laughs> so you can control those kind of things. But if you had somebody who just wanted to sit in a chair and take a picture or or record from there, that's gonna not be very disruptive and that's something that is allowed under the statutes. Minutes and recording of votes. There's actually very little in the statutes, which I was surprised at when I really <laughs> started looking for this stuff. But um, you are required to keep a record of the motions and roll calls of, of each meeting, but that's basically all it says. So it's, it's pretty sparse on that. You can decide as a board if you want more extensive minutes than that. Um, public records, generally we're just gonna take care of that for you. Steven is gonna take care of most of it. He keeps the record of with the agendas that are sent out, the minutes, any uh, other topics that are brought before you. He keeps those records for you. He will keep um, all the emails that if he sends emails to you. The one thing I would note is um, if you are using a home email address, there's a couple of things that I would recommend. One is that you can, on your home email, create a separate file folder. Those are public records, those emails. So I would, I would create a separate file folder, just shoot all those right into that separate file folder to keep them. Technically, they should be kept for seven years. The other way you can do it, and you'll notice on the bottom of that page, there's a designated email address for the committee. You guys are sab at ci.oshkosh.wi.us. If you send emails to that address, they're on the city server and they get archived automatically. So if I'm on the board and someone sends me something directly they don't go through Stephen don't go through the city his city email address they send it to me and they say Lynn we I'm interested in SAB and I know you from some other board you're on or something and and I think you guys should take this up that has to do with the the business of this body it is a public record because it deals with the business of this of this body so one thing, I can stick it in my SAB folder and I can hang on to it for seven years. A good practice to get into is copy it onto that SAB at ci.oshkosh. That will actually get copied to, I think Stephen is think probably the designee on that address. Goes to me, yep. It will go to him and it will get just, just automatically get archived on the city system. You won't need to worry about it. If there is some kind of open records request, it will show up when we search on the city system then. As long as we forward any emails, yep. we don't have to worry about keeping them seven years. Correct. What if you spill they, water on your computer and doesn't <laughs> you know, It's still and. probably, it's a, if, if you don't have storage problems, if you it's probably still a good idea. The, the unfortunate thing is there is no case law, there's no guidance coming down from the state. The the. Open meetings law and the public records law, way behind technology. So we're trying to give, you know, best practices. You could still keep it if you if you can have the room and keep it, I would keep it. If you don't have the storage room with your personal email, which some of them do put limits on that you can't. Right. No, can't it just be an issue of if the hardware but if the hardware crashes, in, it's going to be crashes. gone this way. Do we have to it, spend lots of money to get nope. the hardware fixed? No. no. As long as we forwarded it to Stephen or the SAB. Yep. Then it is on the okay. city system and, and the city archives. And anything we receive from Stephen is already on the city. It's already on the system. We don't need yep. to worry about it. Okay. Yep. 
to that point, Lynn, if somebody's computer did crash, which, you know. Technology it, is it, it not does flawless. Yep. Exactly. Um, we, I mean, if we don't have to figure out a way to recover that. No. Okay. If, if we, I mean, because we didn't do that on purpose. Right. You know, uh, no, I again, have a we match. don't have I any, we don't have any court guidance on this, but it would okay. be difficult for me to, to believe a court would say, you know, you need to go out and spend X dollars, especially the, the reason we gave you the, the board is, address is to give you that ability. If you come in and you tell a, a judge and say, listen, my practice is I always forward to this city address so it's backed up on the city drive. My computer crashed. I don't have it. I can't see a court saying, okay, I'm going to, you know, punish you or punish the city because you didn't have control over that. And you've done, you've taken reasonable, prudent steps to maintain that email. But I, again, my advice is get into the habit of copying that address so that if, if anything would happen, you can get up and, and say, I'm really good about sending it, and I don't typically give out my personal email address and conduct the, the business on there. I go, I use that, copy that city address, or I just get stuff from Stephen and it's on the city address. What about retroactively? Um, from, just from this point forward, we should copy the, that, or do you want me to go back and send 10 years worth of emails to that address? Oh, yeah. Um, seven years you have to keep it. Seven years you would have to keep. So it's it's kind of up to you. If you send them through, they'll get archived. The other thing, um, and I would have to check with IT, but I would assume if we can drop them on a on a drive, we can also archive them here. But I I would have to. Okay. I'm not the best with the day. <laughs> I would have to ask Tony exactly how they would be able to do that. But that might be okay. easier than clogging up Stevens. Well, I was just thinking he's years. not going to be appreciating that. He looked a little horrified there for a second. But mm -hmm. Okay. So we Thank can you. we can check that out and um if you want to remind me tomorrow we can check with IT and oh, yeah. we can respond and let everybody know on that sure. what what they think is the best practice. Thank you. Um, ethics. This is another kind of general topic. There's basically two kinds of restrictions placed on local officials. The first one prevent, prevents you from profiting from holding the public office. So if people are going to give you Packer tickets to sway your vote on something that comes before this board, <laughs> you should not be taking the Packer tickets. <laughs> The other thing is not to participate in decisions in which you have a personal financial interest. So if you are have designed the latest, greatest rain barrel and um, you want to bring it and have the city endorse this rain barrel and do a rain buy a bunch of these rain barrels and do a program, you should not be voting on that because presumably you've still own the company and are going to make a bundle off the new improved rain barrels. So um, again, you, you can't accept items or things of value um, for yourself or for any your spouse or any children based on um, that's given to you because you're on the sustainability board. So I'm going to use Margie because she knows my children and adores my <laughs> <I do. laughs> my boys who adore her. <laughs> so uh, if I would bring Margie and say, you know, I just appreciate everything you did for my kids growing up. Here's a gift certificate for Culver's. It's not because she's on the sustainability board. It's because she's really a little bit um, naive and just my kids put one over on her and she <laughs> and she still liked them so but as long as it's not for the the reason of influencing her on the board that's a different issue now if i said i'm the creator of the rain barrels and i'm bringing this to the board and we should i want you to look favorably on this Here's a gift certificate or packer tickets or whatever. That's, that would be a different issue because there I am trying to influence her. It's both. a gray area, isn't it? It's always a little gray, yes. I, I would think so. But, and anything on the, the ethics ones, 
behind that first page that I gave you are some sheets that look like this. These are from the state of Wisconsin and they're guidelines that kind of walk you through by asking you questions and just giving you the rules in kind of nice, simple terms. I always include those because I think they did a really nice job of, of walking through the issues for you. So you can look at those. This and then the other thing is you can always call our office with ethics questions. Um, Dave or Amy or myself will walk through them with you. We do keep those conversations confidential, so you don't have to worry that I will come and broadcast to everyone your personal information. If you call us with ethics questions and we walk through it with you, we do keep that confidential. So that takes us to the conduct of the meetings. And I think on the agenda it said Robert's Rules of Order, but I'm going to tell you we threw those out the window right away. We used to rely more on Robert's Rules of Order. In 2017, the council um, indulged a little bit, the city clerk and I, and uh, we said we really don't strictly follow Robert's Rules of Order anyway. And Robert's Rules of Order actually were not written for this type of board or commission or, or council. So we had some sheets that the city clerk and I had put together from years ago. And we used, we used them as our cheat sheets when we're up on the, the council dais and they're trying to do something weird parliamentary and we check them out on our, on our sheets. So we took these, which actually were originally based on Robert's Rules of Order, and put the most common motions, the most common um, complaints or issues into a chart form. Mm, thank you. And they adopted one, one set of rules for the council because theirs is just a slightly different, and then this is the set for, for boards and commissions. So what it does is it gives you, again, the most common uh, actions that are going to be taken to remove an item, to consider items, to suspend the rules, to make motions, um, to divide to divide an issue, um, lay over an item, and it will tell you, you know, is there a second required? Is it debatable? Is it amendable? And then what the vote required is. And for boards and commissions, when it says majority or two thirds, it's of the members present and voting. It's slightly different for council. Just since Jake is here, I'm gonna just give you guys an aside for a second. But with council by statute, there is a statute that for city manager form of government is a majority is a quorum and a majority of all members are required to pass any ordinance or resolution so it's always a four vote so if you would only have five members at a meeting a three two actually loses for the wow. council so it's just a little bit different and i wanted to make sure you I understood that, that for the for that purpose but for boards and commissions it's if i say if it's a majority it's members present in voting so tonight you have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Four will will pass anything. Um, two thirds, you got to do math, and I gave that up when I went to law school. So <laughs> you will have to do your own math. If you have a partial body, if it comes when you do your math, it comes out to a third of a person or whatever. You always round up. Ooh. So Ooh. Um, there Ooh. are a couple of things, and we kind of broke these down into categories, taking up item or control of the agenda, how to remove items, consider them out of order, taking up action items, so how to make a motion, how to amend a motion, um, limiting or extending or ending debate, calling for the question, uh, changing previous actions. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, right there. No. Um Will you talk here about point of order and when you can do that or not do that? Sometimes that comes up in meetings. Yes, that is on the next page. Next the page. next page. Okay. 
uh, questions, concerns, and other issues outside the substance of debate. And um, ah. point of order is the first one. And then what we did is we gave you a little parentheses to tell you because everybody gets confused between what's a point of order, what's a point of information, and all these archaic terms, a, a question of privilege. We gave you just a little explanation of those in parentheses. So a point of order is if the rules are not being observed. So if you have a three minute uh, rule on how long somebody can speak to an item and I've now gone on for shockingly long and someone could say point of order we need to stop her from speaking and then the chair will rule on that there's no no second it's not a it's not actually a motion it's not debatable it's not amendable and then at the where under where it says vote required that's where margie gets all power, power. <laughs> so okay thank you she would rule and then there are there is a method to appeal the chair's decision so if if the rest of the body would love to hear more from me and Margie says point of order you're done you guys can jump on the bandwagon and let me speak more so you can overrule her Michelle is vice chair correct that is correct so if we have so if I'm not here chair, okay the website has VC for both you and Michelle, so I'm not sure if you were sharing. Yeah, I know. We need yeah. to fix that. Okay. Oh, yeah, I noticed that, too, just okay. the other day. So there's no power struggle. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, okay. Because we fight for this, let yes, me yeah. tell you. All right. Um, the question of privilege is one um, that I think the name doesn't really it, what it is but question of privilege something's interfering with the with the process it's too hot it's too noisy it's um, they're drilling out in the hallway and we need to have it quieted down something like that it's called a question of privilege and you can interrupt at any time and there again the the uh, chair will direct corrective action she will tell Stephen to fix that so <laughs> Ooh, I like that. <laughs> um, Lynn, I do have one yeah. question that was back a couple of pages. Um, and it, it, when we have, for any of the boards, and I don't know if it's consisted across all the boards and, and committees for the city, we have liaisons from the council on many of the boards, which we like a lot. Um, but does that person, they count as part of our quorum, correct? Or not? For yours, I believe they do. Let so they're not consistent across sure. boards and committees. I sit on more than one, so I get consistent. It is not necessarily consistent across them okay. all. For um, this one, do we? You have, let me look down. Originally we did, unless that was changed sometime. But just yours is just says the advisory board shall consist of nine members. Are you appointed, you're appointed as, a, you're one of the nine? He is one of the nine. So mm -hmm. then he is a member. Okay, so he counts for quorum. Yep. Congratulations. <laughs> and, and his vote counts. Correct. Okay. Just wanted to be clear on that. Yeah, we did have, there was at least one other board, and I think we've clarified that now, but that had um, a council member who would go to the meetings and was a liaison but wasn't actually on the board. So it, it's you have to actually look at each board to make sure, but... If okay. you're appointed as one of the nine members, then you are a regular voting member. Hey, Jake, you're one of us. Thank you. I thought I was already. You are. <laughs> just confirmed. Um, just to finish out that chart, there's ending a meeting, and um, then the other, there's just selection of officers or temporary chairs if required. So you have the, the motions and votes for that. With some of them, we included a little description um, of how to do those things again I'm not going to read these to you but you, if you are going to intending to make a motion like that you might want to take a quick look at that the other one I will mention is a general rule of decorum um, and that's right on that first page they the council adopted the civility pledge back in 2011 and in these rules they also adopted a general rule of decorum that um, allows you if you would have somebody who is unruly 
uh, or disruptive at your meetings. It gives you the um, procedure for how to deal with with that. So, and once again, it, it relies pretty heavily on the Pages presiding that, officer. So, what so page it, is that on? It is on the the very first page of the. It's the big paragraph on the first page of this section. Oh, okay. Thank you. We've had that problem occasionally in planning commission. <laughs> We no longer have that problem here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and un, you know, it's unfortunate, but at least you have kind of an outline of how to deal with it if it would, would occur. So, and obviously, I mean, if it ever gets to a situation where you feel unsafe or it's, it's um, rises to a level you need the police, you don't go through this procedure, you get yourself okay. the police and they will respond to it. So we don't, we don't expect you to, um, to deal with situations that are beyond uh, what a So I don't just refer that to Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> uh, the next section is just a purpose and interrelationship of community development entities um, and some of the resources for you. Under the city ordinances, community development department is assigned to assist the sustainability advisory board. So this just kind of gives you a little blurb of what each one of the community development um, boards and commissions and what the individuals in those in that department do. And then we threw in a couple of other ones that aren't under the community development but that have a lot of interaction with these same boards traffic review parking utility um, I guess that's it for this one but and then we have the what the community development and planners are generally do and what the zoning administrator does just to kind of give you an idea of of where this board fits and what other things are in the community development uh, department for you to relate to the next section is the ordinances and statutes. Again, so that you just have this all in one place. We have the, you guys are not a statutory committee, like mm. plan commission is. Mm. So when we do the book for plan commission, we were, which we're working on now, because we have the new zoning code in place. That one's a little more lengthy and, <laughs> and <laughs> complicated. But um, th in that one, we will have the statutory authority as well. Board of Zoning Appeals is a statutory board. I know there are others, and I'm blank right at I think the moment. Landmarks. Is landmarks is. is. So if you had a statute, we would have that in here. You guys are, are purely a creature of ordinance. So you have the general rules um, for ordinances that has um, just um, the residency requirements, that members can only serve on no more than two boards. And yep. along those lines, would you explain to me, item B, if you're a member of the library board, can you also be a member of two boards as or not? Does the library board count as? The only caveat with the library board, I would say, is there are some people on the library board who are appointed because of their um, position, their, the position that they, they hold. If you were um, appointed to the library board, and it, there might be actually county positions on there as well. Yeah. So if you were on as a county position, then I would say you could be on the library board and two others. It's city, city appointed positions. So a city, if the library director says, would you like to be on the board? And I say, yes, that means I shouldn't be on two other boards. Correct. Not as oh. a city represent, not as a city representative, you could be on like as a, as one of the county appointed. Got to tell Jeff about that. But. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, the, your vast compensation of zero is in this ordinance, so you, you, uh, we have all volunteer boards and commissions. Um, talks about when we f fill vacancies, that you'll have a meeting, regular meetings at a regular time and place, which you do. Um, electing officers, so it's it's the basic 
basic rules for every board and commission. Um, and it also gives you the ability, um, as a, again, through your chairperson, to do subcommittees if you so choose. So I would note that one. And then you have your ordinance for the Sustainability Advisory Board. Um, and then the last page is just some additional resources. If you are looking for information, um, the state, state of Wisconsin, League of Wisconsin Municipalities, the UW Extension has a local government section that has information. And you can always call our office. Again, it's 236-5115. Uh, and it's either myself, Lynn, Dave, or Amy. So. 5115. 5115. Yep. And, or you can always go through Stephen as well. And Stephen will get your question, and he, if he can't answer it, he knows where to find us as well. So he can tra track one of us down. So. Super. Does anybody else have any questions for Lynn? Okay. Thank All you right, so thank you. much. Give and thank you for the really cool stuff. books. Thanks, for coming. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, under general rules of order with those cool little charts, I see that under control of agenda action, there's one called withdraw from agenda. A second is required, but I would like to withdraw item five from tonight's agenda. Mm -hmm. Um, because that can hold and we have a lot yet to do tonight so that does require a second would anyone like to second my motion second thank you it is debatable does anybody care <laughs> it is not amendable and it takes a majority to um, approve this so all in favor of deleting five from tonight's agenda Aye. 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 great thank you <laughs> And we will save that for an, another night. Um, we have a few updates, but then we also have two chapters to look at in our workshop. So I don't want to keep everybody here until midnight on this beautiful, dark, and stormy night. <laughs> <laughs> so let's move on to number six, um, UW Oshkosh Environmental Studies Projects. Stephen, are you going to tell us all about them? Yeah. So... Um as many of you probably know, the semester at UW Oshkosh is now underway. Um, we are working again with Professor Jim Feldman, who we've worked with for many semesters in the past. Um, we've had a long, successful line of collaboration and collaborative efforts from between the students and the SAB. So I'm working with that class again. Margie and I met, what, a couple weeks back with the class. We kind of gave them their charge. They are continuing to work on this audit tool that we have, this green infrastructure audit. Um, our goal for this semester is for them to actually get into this tool and start actually auditing our ordinances. I know Misty's class in the spring started kind of the groundwork for this. They did some research for it, but they didn't quite get into our ordinances. I'm helping Jim's class get into the ordinances. We're gonna use some of Misty's class's research and then we're going to actually look at how we can improve our ordinances, come up with some ideas, you know, research some case studies, best practices, et cetera. Um, so they're going to look at the architectural design standards section of this. So we have in our zoning ordinance a whole chapter on design standards. Community outreach and education. So that's another section of this that they're going to look at, which is less a chapter of an ordinance and more kind of where we are in terms of outreach and education methods and sort of our baseline for that. Landscaping, which is a chapter of our zoning code. Um, and there's some public works considerations in there too. And then permeable materials will be the last one. Um, so there's four chapter or four sections of this. They're not gonna do every bit of it, obviously, but those four sections are what we're hoping to hone down on and really kind of zero in on. Um, we've met with Julia Nordic from the Wisconsin Sea Grant Institute, which actually helped come up with this tool. Um, she met with us as city staff months and months back. Dr. Feldman got her into his class. 
just, I believe, last week or the week before. Um, and so recently, and she talked to the students, and I went and actually got to talk to the groups too. I am going to be meeting with two of the groups this week, starting with the first one tomorrow, um, the landscaping group tomorrow, and I believe the outreach and education group on Thursday. So um, we're looking forward to collaborating with the students. I've already gotten into the audit and started getting into our codes and seeing what relevant code language is there for the students to look at and to really um, try to address. So that was my sort of homework that the professor gave to me was looking at the codes because we didn't want the students to try to go into hundreds of pages of ordinances and try to dig all of that out. Um, so I did that part of it. And then the groups will look at the, or the language that I found and that other staff found, and they will actually start to look at case studies and best practices. So that's kind of where we are on that. Um, I'm looking forward to it. It should be another good semester. And they will be reporting to us in December at our regularly scheduled meetings. Okay. So. And we'll invite the council again. I have to do that. Um, so we'll get that on the calendar. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Oh, and you, we maybe should add, too, that um, on the... If, if you looked at all the materials for the meeting, all the documentation stuff, the PowerPoint that Stephen gave to the students is actually listed on there. So it gives some examples of what they're going to be doing, too, in case you're curious. It's not like you have to read it, but they'll present it to us in December. Um, okay, next on the agenda, the Environmental Leadership Award update. Um, did you receive this I sent I it did. out about four o'clock today yep. and I got that um, and Jake I, I did send I did copy you on at that four o'clock I probably didn't get it yeah I don't look, think you had a chance to look at it yeah, yeah but it is there for you okay. um, I did change some dates yep. again um, I updated the proposal with um, I moved the dates back a little bit because and then I wrote um, and you can just you can hand that to Jake please you have a copy of that at home but that's um, the summary that I wrote for it Okay. So if you have any questions on that, please let me know. But otherwise, we can get going as soon as... Cool, huh? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Um, Terrace Tree Proposal. Bring us up to date on this, Stephen. I see you've been busy. It's been a while since this was before us, and it was um, not as refined and not as worked out as it is now. So basically, I took this to my department head, Alan Davis and my boss Darren Burrich and Mr. Davis really wanted to see more substance to this because I originally Bill Sturm and I city forester Bill Sturm and myself we worked on a memo um, sort of a rough draft but Mr. Davis saw it and he wanted to see a little bit more in terms of the analysis section and the fiscal impact section um, he wanted to know more about what this terrorist tree policy actually was that you know more than what we were explaining so I worked with the city forester a little bit some months back, a couple months ago, um, but you know, since our last meeting, but you know, a little bit of time back, and he um, added a little bit more substance to this. Um, so I appreciate that, and hopefully you all had a chance to review it. But he basically explained, you know, the reasoning for the terrace tree proposal, this policy. Um, it's really an internal department policy, so it's not necessarily an ordinance, but it's something that we would have to we'd probably still run by public works and run past uh, the city council um, to get approval and then implement it as a policy. Basically, the fiscal impact, um, really what Mr. Stern put in here was that the cost of the trees in installation shall be funded by an addition to really your assessment that you would see for, as part of a normal street project. So. 0.05% of the total assessment of the project costs would be held in a fund specific to tree planting along that affected street. Um, so it'd be a small portion of the overall cost of the project, but that's really his proposal for how we would fund terrace tree installations. There are certain areas in town or in the city that would not lend themselves to terrace trees. Um, as many of you probably know, the underground utilities might run through. Some of the terraces, like on Jackson, they're like 18 inches, so they're way too small for a lot of terrace trees. But in the areas that we can install them, that the utilities and the size of the terraces don't preclude it, we would try to do that. So this is what we have here, and I think it was all included in your, your packets. And what I was hoping was, you know, if you're okay with it, 
we could maybe take action on it. I changed the agenda and repost it so it doesn't show on your in your packets probably, but the agenda, the latest one, should have action in there um, so we could take a vote. If you approve it, I would have to run it past Public Works. We'd have to get their okay and make sure that they're on board and we're on the same page with them. And then we'd probably run it through the city manager and to the common council. So this is what you would like to have us vote on? Yes. And approve? Pretty much. That's the... Um, that's the draft there, and then this memo is something that Did I could see, see maybe sending it through. Um, so really, it's some of the same material, um, but yes. Okay. I was also just figuring out what 0.05% of something would be, and it's like 20 cents on $100. So it's pretty minimal yeah. as far as the impact on the homeowner. It can be very very maximal <laughs> yeah for our streets yes. so i think it's a win-win um okay have you all had a chance to review the would anybody like to make a motion to approve or anything like that a question steve uh, sure. this might just be a reminder for me but this was pretty much putting down just in words what they kind of already do Correct. Kind of, yeah. I mean, they, they, I know the city forester kind of just, he goes through and at his discretion, he does plant trees when he mm -hmm. can. But this is more of a hard policy that okay. we would get public works on board and then as part of every project possible, we would try to codify it more or less. It wouldn't be an ordinance per se, but at least it would be a little bit more um, fleshed out and a little bit more meat to it than currently because right now it's just more of, practice I guess and once it's in writing it's more apt to happen mm -hmm. any other questions on this not hearing any I move approval <laughs> second all in favor Aye. 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 thanks Okay, quick update on the farmer's market. I believe we're done for this season, or is there one more, Robert? Nope, oh, that's it. Ah, uh, okay, because it's getting cold out. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. quite fresh. <laughs> it's, it's, it's been crisp the last couple of mornings. But, but while we're on that, Robert has a really good idea for the next farmer's market. Oh, yeah, that's, I, I, wanna, I was wondering if the board would like be interested in creating a, a one-sheet handout um, so that when somebody stops by our table and they say, what can I do? That they, we can hand them a sheet and say, here are the things you can do. Not use plastic grocery bags, not use plastic straws, don't use styrofoam. Um, and everybody can contribute all of their ideas towards that to create a, a simple one sheet handout of actionable items that people in the farmer's market environment can pick up and see that they can do things to affect change. I'd like to put that on the agenda for next week and people come in with that. I think it's a wonderful idea. I think it is, too. Um, as I recall, we do not do the winter farmer's market. Is that correct? No, I believe we do. Nope. Okay, so we won't be at the market again until June. Right. So we do have a little while to sure. work on it, but we don't want to let it slide away. So... We should put that on future items. I don't know if it'll make it on in the next couple of months, but doesn't matter. But we do have a little time, and we we had sort of talked about this last month, hadn't we? Yeah, Mr. Okay. Olaf thought it was a good idea. Oh, well then, it at our table. All right. Um, okay. I'm. I think we're also looking at a way to have a community pop-up or something that we can so yes. we can have a little bit more protection right um yes mr Olaf stopped by our booth last month and or two months ago i guess it was a month if five weeks ago and and spent a lot of time with us so it was wonderful uh, okay anything else on the farmer's market has anybody, I know Vic, you had a chance to go once this year, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had, I had a jar of straws um, that were used in a, a local bar um, over a couple well, you days. You did get that. Yep, and then um, we had people 
guess how many nasty, disgusting straws they thought were in my jar. <laughs> um, and then we had one guess that was only two off, so it was pretty impressive. And Ooh. they have received their n- new metal reusable straws. Awesome. <laughs> I even had a prize. It was Talk fun. about initiative. I love it. <laughs> it was fun. It has nothing to do with the farmer's market, but I do want to um, mention that we do have a couple of, of stars in our, our group now, too. Vic had done a um, TV interview for us. With, and radio. And radio, that's right, to the talk show in the morning. Do you want to Got speak? promoted. promoted. paper. Yeah, that's not related to this. Okay. Um, yeah, so for the letter that I wrote for the um, school district on vehicle idling, um, was on the news on WBAY, right? So, yeah. Um, on the radio and then in um, a local paper as well. So, lots of feedback. It's on Facebook now. <laughs> yes, Read it at your leisure. <laughs> and we also, our, our good friend Alicia, who uh, has many wonderful concerns that she shares with us, got to just happen to be in Roundy's at just the right time, or um, it's not, what at store? Pick at Pick and Save, which is a Roundy's store, at, or a Kroger store now, and got interviewed about how wonderful it would be not to have all those bags. So, yes. Stars among us. Okay. Um, we will not be having a Menominee Shoreland restoration report tonight um, because Michelle wasn't able to make it and we have no update. But we will have the Sustainable Communities Network update. Do, which do, do we have to vote on that to remove it from the agenda? No, no because it's no just one. an update. Oh, okay. It's not actionable at all. I guess the other wasn't really either, but I, I just wanted to talk. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, okay, so then Sustainable Communities Network. Stephen did a fantastic job. We hosted it here, and he did a, a very nice video. Oh, well, PowerPoint. PowerPoint, yep. Um, actually, it looked a lot like the one we did for the students, PowerPoint, didn't it? Yes, sir. We, as in Stephen. As, <laughs> So basically, um, Margie and I both went, and what we did was that group, which is basically um, communities, so you know, also organizations from the Fox Valley, they come together, like I think Menasha is part of it, Fox Crossing, Evergreen Credit Union. Um, there's a few others, but it was a pretty small group this time, but they, um, they came in, they had asked me to give a presentation on what we as a city were doing on that audit that I mentioned the green infrastructure audit. Um, so I kind of explained what I had done to date and then explained what the students were gonna be working on. So I gave them a PowerPoint, I kind of took them through the audit tool, explained what the function of it is, um, talked about like the community scoping part of it, which allows you to kind of gauge your, your community's um, public opinion as far as sustainable initiatives, green infrastructure, et cetera. And then I went in and I took um, a few of the pages that I did for the students. So I, I looked at parking, for example, and I showed them those in action. So what the tool gives you to start out with as far as kind of sample um, you know, barriers and stuff that might prohibit the use of infrastructure, green infrastructure. And then I put in our ordinance language and then some ideas for how we could improve um, and presented that to the group. So. It was impressive. What kind of feedback did you get? They were very fascinated, actually. Um, they had good. some good questions about it, but then they also mentioned that I think, um, I forget if it was Fox Crossing that had worked on it too. I think it was, yeah. yeah. Yes. Maybe. They, they didn't do it quite as in-depth per se, but they did do the entire audit. So it is nice to see that other communities and other municipalities are looking at, at this tool and looking at their own ordinances. Um, in addition to that, they also presented on Buckthorn. They had a lot of other good material that they presented to us, so I wasn't the only one that presented. So there was a good exchange of information, which is the idea for that, that group. And I think I shared a lot of that in your packets, it's, or in, at least in the materials I posted online. There's several um, pieces of information that were shared about Buckthorn, which is um, highly invasive. And then there was also one on wild parsnip, which is not just invasive, but can hurt you. So if you have a chance to look at those, they're, they're flyers that um, had come from 
UW Extension or something like that, but they're they're very informational. So I'd had the privilege several years ago, and I do say privilege in quotes, um, of helping a group of teenagers clean out Buckthorn at High Cliff, and it's not a fun project. And the problem is that when you don't get it all, it becomes more and more invasive. So it's some really good information, and of course that's available to anyone. Um, so if somebody's interested in that, you can direct them to the site to, to look for that. Anything else on that? that no, I don't think so, unless anybody okay. had any other questions. But And just so you know, you're all welcome to attend that. I yep. think we did notice it this time because we, it was we do. here. We notice yeah. it. Um, that's one of those things that we try to make sure we do so that we can have people from the SAB come. I think we're on a mailing list. I believe you are. Mm -hmm. yes. So, yeah. Yep. Yep. That said, I realize they're held during the day, yeah. so. Okay, that takes us down to agenda items for a future meeting. So far, I have um, a one-sheet handout on how to help save the world for the farmer's market. And um, the PAH pollution information um, for a future date. Does anybody have anything else? Well, the farmer market proposal, you know. <laughs> Yeah, that's what, right. yep, oh, that's what okay. I. Not just yep. the one sheet thing, but the, the thing about re, you know, selling the, the. What Alicia said. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But let me write it down here again. Okay. Alicia, did we have anything new on? Um, do we know anything more about the packets of silverware? Or Mary Jo, I guess I could ask anybody. I had a meeting this morning actually with Michelle from Food Service, and I got a better understanding of why we're sitting in the position that we are with those packets. A big thing was the timing for the students to eat. Um, they try to save as much time as possible, so they do those packets, so that way they're only grabbing one thing versus possibly having to grab three things. The other piece of that too is because of a lot of the schools do not have dishwasher systems and so things couldn't get filtered back to the high school to be washed because of how long those dishwashers are already working. Um, so that's kind of where things are at right now. It's still a conversation that we're having. Um, we might try thinking of different like pilot ideas to possibly try at Traeger but I haven't had a chance to talk to the principal yet about that. Um, so that's kind of where things are at right now. So, so I would call that in process. It's very much in process. Yeah, it's okay. it's still something. Yeah, we're we're working on baby steps, but we're gonna try to be very sensitive of it and and work through it. So see what we can do. Excellent. Yeah. And don't move. Have you heard any feedback on the vehicle idling letter? I have, have not heard. Anything? I have observed that it seemed like. When the weather wasn't so cold, the cars were shutting off. They were just having windows open. Um, but now the last few days that it's been cooler out, unfortunately, even today when I went to the school at 145, there was a gentleman sitting out there with his car running. Maybe he shuts it off after a while. I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, it's it seemed like people were shutting off. But Good. Well, yeah. baby steps, like you said. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Sure. Um, okay, with that, our next meeting will be on Monday, November 5th, not in this room, so be sure and read your packet to find out where to go. And I would entertain a motion to adjourn to workshops so we can work on those two chapters. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, let's do it. Mm -hmm.